The city is probably the oldest, most enduring invention of our civilization. The words are interchangeable. Civilization, civil, civic, city. Cities evolve over time. They respond to crises. And historically, they emerge from crises stronger than ever before. So what are the future trends for cities? And what are the lessons of history? My name is Yvonne Akisoya, and I'm the mayor of Freetown, the capital city of Sierra Leone. In this masterclass, I'd like to share with you our integrated urban development plan or agenda known as hashtag transform Freetown. The starting place for this is my decision to run for office. I've come from the private sector. I made a decision in 2017, um, about nine months before the election, because of a desire to see a significant improvement in um, what was then a terrible sanitation situation in the city, as well as an impending environmental disaster. So that's where I started. But where did the city start? Um, the challenge that we're seeking to address with Transform Freetown goes beyond the environmental challenges and the sanitation difficulties. Those are in fact symptoms rather than the root cause. The root cause is the rapid growth of the population of the city. Driven initially in the late 90s and early 2000s during the Civil War, a time when the city's population grew from 500,000 to um, over 750,000. And in the 20 years since then, this population growth has continued, now fueled by economic pursuits, people looking for better opportunities in the city, um, but also influenced by climate change, as crops have failed with abnormal rainfall um, and, you know, sort of an unpredictable weather conditions. So what we now have in the city is a city that can no longer cope with a number of people, and that growth happened without a very key element of urban development, and that is planning. And the reason that that has happened, the reason that there has not been planning, is because the devolution of that function from the central government to the local government, enshrined, though it is, in the 2004 Local Government Act, it's enshrined there, but it's never actually been implemented. As a consequence, the city has seen an explosion of informal settlements. 35% of residents now live in informal settlements where sanitation, where environmental disaster, where access to basic services like healthcare, education, jobs become more and more difficult as environments with poor housing are created on the mountain sides and along the coast, making what was already stretched infrastructure even more stretched. So Transform Freetown is about addressing all of this. And in order to do so, what the city has done, when I came into office in May 2018, we started off with engaging 15,000 of our residents in focus groups. We went to each of our 322 zones, um, which are found within the 48 wards. And we asked people, based on what I had set out in my campaign strategy, my campaign agenda, which was called For a Community, For a Free Town, For a Progress, based on those areas of focus, translating them now more into development language, we were able to engage our residents along the Transform Free Town framework which sets out four clusters and 11 priority sectors. The four clusters are resilience, human development, healthy city, and urban mobility. And within each of those clusters, you have a number of priority sectors, 11 in total. So within resilience, we have environmental management, not surprisingly, at number one. But secondly, urban planning and housing. And then thirdly, revenue mobilization. For a city to be resilient, that city must be able to protect the environment, especially in this era of rapid climate change. We must be working against that. We must be able to provide housing and we must have planning. 
to deal with that explosion of population that I mentioned. But thirdly, there needs to be revenue. The city's revenues were abysmally small, abysmally low when I took over, when I came into office in 2018. It was the equivalent of $1.25 per capita. That's $1.25 that city had to spend on each resident, hardly enough to make any difference whatsoever. Moving on from resilience, the second cluster is human development. Who is in the city and what do we do to ensure that they have a better quality of life by investing in them? So human development has four clusters, four sectors, I beg your pardon. The first is education. The second is skills development. The third is job creation with a tourism focus. And the fourth is persons with disability. In Healthy City, we have water, we have sanitation, we have health. And finally, our 11th sector, which is itself of our fourth cluster, is urban mobility. How do people move around in the city? How do we make sure that this enhances economic productivity? So those four, clust those four clusters and those 11 priority sectors were presented in the language of sectors to the 15,000 residents, and we had them rate how well they felt the city had been doing previously um, in these sectors. Shockingly, or perhaps not surprisingly, not a single sector was scored on average as high as five over 10, where one was really bad and 10 was excellent. Not one sector was scored five. The highest score was four. We moved on then from getting input from residents across the piece to being able to get feedback from our technical experts and input. So we set up technical sector working groups. And these working groups comprise development partners, NGOs, people from the private sector, academia, professional institutions, as well as Freetonians who were interested in any one of those particular topics using the, seven, the 11 priority sectors. So we had the feedback from our residents. Um, they specifically had articulated quant qualitatively, as well as the quantitative assessment of how well the city was doing. They also gave qualitative input as to what they wanted to see. So this was fed in alongside more technical research papers and other in information that was available across those sectors. And over a period of two months, the technical working groups met in what we described as labs um, in order for us to come out of those sessions with a set of targets. So Transform Freetown has not just the four clusters and the 11 priority sectors, but 19 specific targets, a maximum of two targets per sector, but some sectors have one. And those targets is, are what we committed, have committed to deliver on. And those targets were developed really having in mind our theory of change. Our theory of change that said, first of all, what was the problem in each of the sectors from urban planning to health, environmental management, et cetera? What were the potential solutions? What were we as a city in a position to change? So in terms of the solutions, which of those solutions would we be able to um, mobilize resource to implement, but also have the capacity to deliver as well as the mandate? So that narrowed down our activities and those interventions into what we could do to deliver on those specific 19 targets. And we launched Transform Freetown um, in a very, very public, high profile um, setting with the president giving the keynote address on the 24th of January, 2019, and ripped our feet to the fire and said to Freetonians, this is it. And all of our targets are numeric, they're measurable, and we report on them. Every year we produce our annual report on Transform Freetown. The first was produced in 2020, and the next will be published in a week's time. And we demonstrate um, through tracking our progress how far we have gone in seeking to deliver on those targets. I would ask 
um, that anyone who's interested to please have a look on our website, www.fcc.gov.sl. You will find there the Transform Free Town Plan. You will also find the one-year report. And in a week's time, you will find the second report. But if I could just highlight a couple of the in in initiatives on the Transform Free Town, which might be um, you know, sort of, of interest um, for a bit of a deep dive in this very brief session. One would be along, um, as part of our environmental management, a target of ensuring that we increase vegetation cover by 50% and by 2022. We launched on the 3rd of January, 2020, Freetown the Tree Town, a plan to plant a million trees. And it's not just to plant a million trees, but actually to grow those trees. And we've made considerable progress in building the infrastructure to make that happen, in engaging communities so that we have community participation through tree giveaways, through having residents serve as tree stewards, through working through local nurseries to provide the seedlings, um, and then using an app, customized app, which enables us to track the growth of every tree. Um, and we have created employment through this process by not just having tree stewards who are volunteers, but at also having tree growers. Over 500 people um, are registered through 10 community-based organizations to monitor the growth of the trees. We've planted over 300,000 of those trees in the rainy season that just passed, and we will be planting um, the remaining 700,000, um, starting with planting into mangroves, um, some of which will be done in the dry season, but with a big push to plant the rest of the million trees in the next rainy season, which will be from June. But building the infrastructure was a significant part of setting up Freetown, the tree town. And that has been done. And now we'll be rolling it, rolling through into final implementation. But it doesn't end with planting. As I mentioned, our objective here is to grow trees and to ensure that we meet that target of increasing vegetation cover by at least 50%. Another example of a free town, of a transformed free town intervention is one that falls under our SEC target for revenue mobilization. And that target is to increase um, property rate or, or tax revenue fivefold by 2022. And we've done this by targeting our property rate, the most significant own source, genera own source revenue generated for the city. We moved from a manual um, area-based system to a digital points-based system. And we've utilized technology in as much as we worked with a satellite image of the city. We were able to identify and measure all the rooftops build up criteria and in, in, in the, the process of doing that first using the satellite and then with ground truthing using enumerators to visit every property identified we were able to grow our property database from 30,000 about 30,000 um, domestic properties to over 97,000 and that enabled us to increase our revenue base sadly in 2020 the year in which we did all of this work we were prevented um, by uh, the Minister of Local Government from proceeding um, or, um, on the basis that there were national guidelines that needed to be produced. Um, thankfully, those have now been produced, and we are rolling out this system, which not only digitizes the, um, the assessment of properties, but also ensures that the collection of property rates um, is also digitized. That we, we have a, a system whereby now all payments um, have to be made and can only be made in the bank, um, that the, the transactions are linked directly to um, a software which is held by key people in the, in the council. Um, and so at any point in time, I can look on my, on my laptop and I will see what payments are being made per property, where they're being made, through which bank, what the balance is, what the differences are. And that's significant in terms of transparency reporting and also enabling participatory budgeting, which we have started to do now through digital town halls. In the interest of time, I'm going to stop here um, and ask that those who might be interested, follow us on Facebook, 
Um, Yvonne Akisoya, Mayor of Freetown, is our Facebook is our Facebook page, and also Freetown City Council. And you will be able to see for yourself the evolution of our journey to transform Freetown. Thank you very much for listening.